It's good to meet you, Bishop Wonderful Joseph. Wonderful to meet you, yeah. Bishop Gerard. He's from Brazil and I'm from Germany and uh, we need the same experience you have in Brazil for church planning, but we want to ask you some question maybe about yourself and your family. Yes, uh, I was born in Spain, even though I work in, 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 in Brazil. And I grew up in a, in a Roman Catholic church and then I came to the Lord and six years ago I got married and I have a little daughter who is six months six month old and, and my wife is Brazilian and she's a doctor. Oh, that's very good. Yes. <laughs> Do doctor for physical and you're a doctor for spiritual and We fulfill so. all the parts. <laughs> yeah. This is very good. Was there a time in your life you knew uh, you are not a Christian, and then you became a Christian? Yes, uh, as I said, I grew up a Roman Catholic, but um, for me God was something very distant. It was not personal. Yeah. And uh, when I was almost 20 years old, or around 20 years old, I was really uh, far away from God. Uh, I would not say I knew Jesus Christ. I, I, knew, I had some concept about God. And, and one, one night I was at home, and I was very angry with God. And I began to scream to God, why are you doing this, why are you doing that, you know. Even though I didn't, I was not worried about God at all, or thinking about God. When I was angry, I was angry to God. Therefore, as I was shouting to Him and screaming to Him, I would begin to feel worse and worse and worse. And in one moment, I kneeled down and began to cry and say, God, if you are there, you are there. And as I was praying out, I was only putting my heart to God. I felt this deep peace in my heart, and I heard this voice who say, eh, go to visit a Protestant church. And I began laughing, because I say, in Spain, yeah. we are Roman Catholic, we are non-Protestant. Therefore, I went to the Jero pages, and I opened the Jero pages, and there I saw uh, a Protestant church. And I went there, and as I was uh, getting into the, the church, they were in the middle of the communion, and the same voice said, welcome home. And since then, you know, um, a pastor took me in and, and began to teach me and, and helping me to grow more and more in the, in, in the Lord. You received the call of Jesus to follow yes. him personally. Was there also some specific calling into the Christian ministry? And how did it come? Well, I, very quick, I felt called by God uh, to the ministry. But for two years, I say, no way, I don't want to be a pastor, I am not good enough. And then finally, you know, I say to God, God, if you really want me to call, I have three things you have to do for me. First is, if I say to my mother or my parents, they, uh, I have a call to be a pastor, they're thinking, I am so cra I am crazy, I have, gone, I have gone nuts. Therefore, I thought, first you have to resolve that, you know, my, my parents are Roman Catholic. Second is, I don't have money to go to theological seminary. How am I going to pay for my college if I don't have money? And third is, well, I came, I came to you. I am visiting different churches, but I am not a member of a church. Therefore, after I did this prayer, in a couple of months, God answered all the questions in a very quick way. Therefore, I went, I came to England. I, I studied in Spain. I came to England. Um, I was in various ministries here, learning English. I went to college. Um, then I went to America, and through this time, my passion was to reach people who didn't know Jesus Christ. Therefore, little by little, I began a passion to start new work. Uh, in some way, I go, I start a work, and when the work grows a little bit and can be self-sufficient, if God raised a man to be a minister, then I appoint, I, I, prep, I equip, I teach, I instruct, um, I ordain him. And I released him from this local ministry as I moved on to another church. This is, this is very good. And uh, did you develop this concept or did you practice it and say it works with me and I teach others? How well, did it come all about? It was, it was natural. It's, I began to do it. And I began to do that without my thought. And, and then I discovered other people did it before me. And there are people who is doing it now. And then I discovered that even the Apostle Paul, Paul did that. He was going from town to town. I never thought about it. I did it 
because it was for me it was something natural something it seems right for me to do um, I thought that my gifting was to start and to get the ground ready and to start the work but I may was not the best person to to keep the church growing and, and to be caring more for the person therefore I need to find someone who their passion was more pastoral and more teaching and therefore I trying to keep doing what God called me to do or what I felt God was leading me to do. Yeah. You said you have a, a special number of people, two or three or how yes. is it usually yes. because well, some of our German friends might <laughs> might like to know it might be possible for us in Germany too, yes. you know? I, everything it started in Spain and I am not sure how it started, but one time praying say God and um, in Spain I say if you give me four people I will start a church anywhere in Spain. And in with that thought I started five churches, five evangelical churches in places they were not evangelical churches. Some of them are closed now. They don't always um, are planted and growth and continue. There is always a number who will not continue. When I went to Brazil, I did the same thing. I said, God, anywhere in Brazil, you give me four people, I will start a church. And people ask me, but why four? Why not three? Why not two? Why the one? I say, you know, some, some say you need 12 because if 12 apostles was there, but it's not necessary. Or... No, I mean, 12 is even better. I yeah. mean, but the reality is in church planting. Yeah. Church planters. I, I, I tease my people saying church planters are crazy people Good. because they are standing in, in a gap yeah. and the spiritual warfare will fight um, in our families, in our emotions, in our tiredness and working very hard and seeing little fruit. I mean, you have to love very much God and be very passionate to be able to do it. The reason why I say four is because I believe uh, you one person alone very easily will fall and then stand up. Because the Bible says it's good for you to walk with another brother. No? Yeah. But two is a couple. Therefore, it means if a third person comes, it's difficult to break this kind of, of, of fra- uh, fellowship and brotherhood. Three people is a triangle. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. also is a very strong relationship between the, the different people. But four is a more dynamic relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, it's much easier to include or to bring into the group more people. Press four people always you will have time to pray and fellowship and there will be more interaction. You can listen to the voice of God. You can um, seek the vision and the mission of God for your local congregation. And that's how we started. And we, if we have four people, we are not concerned about buildings. Yeah, we, can use, yeah. we, could, we could use a pub, we can use a, a school, we can use um, any place. We normally try to find what we call a man of peace. If you remember, Jesus sent the disciples yeah. and say, go through the town. And if they open the house, go in. If don't, you know, uh, go another house. We call it a man of peace. If you find a man, a man of peace, he will be a person who will, may open his house or may say, oh, come here. I will let you use my place. Or, or to go to school, or he may know someone who will help you. And he also, a man of peace, will be someone who will introduce you Brothers. to other people. Yeah. They don't have to be Christians, yeah. but maybe they are, even without being Christian, people who God used to bless that small group. That is crazy. Uh, when you have four people, do you start then with uh, some kind of Bible study or, or, or a little church service or singing and, and sharing faith or how, how, how is it to, to continue? Well, I really, I, w- I will tell you what I tell the people, yeah. but then they have freedom. I always sure. give a lot of freedom for them. I will recommend them to have a Bible study. But a Bible study in which uh, the leader of the group will prepare a more th- truthful or more in-depth Bible study but before he does the Bible study, the best thing is to, do, to read the readings of the lectionary. Yeah. And after people read, people will, will say what text or what God has put in their heart. Okay. What have touched. Each one of them will say that. So the response, what God... Yeah. 
told them through Sakshi. Yeah. And then um, it, we will, the, the leader will have a more in-depth study. We also recommend very much to pray for each other, yeah. and to say uh, the Lord prayer, yeah. and uh, sometimes it's also good to say the creed from yeah. time to time, and to have a time to get to it and, 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 and have fellowship together. We also recommend always to try to bring friends along yeah. if they can. Yeah. And you know, you don't have to say it's a service or not. Because we use, we are using right now in Brazil the Sydney liturgy, the liturgy from the Diocese of Sydney. Yeah. They have some liturgies very, very simple, and some people like to use that as well. Sure. Therefore, this is how we, we do it. People have quite a lot of freedom. Yeah. But we've already had in a Starbucks, in the coffee house. Yeah, you, t- you told them. Yeah. You a communion service of the Book of Common Prayer, yeah. and we sang a hymn. Therefore, we are kind of risky. We take risks. Yeah. <laughs> so and then the people in Starbucks, when you hear you sing, they, what is it all about? Exactly. I mean, we, we are very respectful. You know, yeah. We keep the, the singing very low. Yeah. Uh, and we try to respect everybody. But people look at you and think, who they are, what they are doing. You know? yeah. Mainly when you are celebrating communion, they are watching what you're doing. I mean, there is bread, there is wine. You are consecrating the bread and the wine. Yeah. The four people looking. That shouldn't be happening here. This should be happening in the church. But but you are not using coffee in your cup. You no, use you, we use wine, wine and, yeah. and, and and we bring the carrots and the, yeah. and the. It's very obvious. The, the communion. The communion tray uh, and the chalice yeah. you bring in, in the Starbucks. Yeah. 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 Normally what we do is we arrive there. We have a coffee. We have a time of fellowship, yeah. and then we have a communion service. Very and good. it's very, very good. Yeah. So if you have any material in English, uh, either via email or, or yes. so, we, we would be happy to, to look into it and maybe find some principles and solution encouragement from you from Brazil. Yes, I will try to send you some materials we have in English and yeah. also some videos from friends of mine yeah. who are exploring ways of doing church planting yeah. or in English language. Oh, yeah. Sadly, I don't have anything in German. But uh, we will send you material in English. It will be wonderful to see the things God is going to do in Germany. Yeah. You say, Auf Wiedersehen und Gott segne dich. Bye bye and God bless you. I don't know how you say it in Spanish. In Spanish, uh, uh, adios y Dios te bendiga. Adios. Adios y Dios te bendiga. Adios. Te bendiga. Te bendiga. On your way, yeah. Okay, on your way, yeah. We'll pray for you in Brazil and pray for us in Germany. Amen.